Welcome to Cogito Design, the video series where we take deep dives into the world of tabletop game creation. Now, just before we dive in, our next game, Solar 175, will be launching on Kickstarter in early 2022. And our pre-launch page is now live. So to be notified as soon as the game launches on Kickstarter, click the link below in the description. I've also put some links to help you explore what the game is all about. Now, there is an interesting distinction in game design, a distinction that designer Soren Johnson terms as the difference between static and dynamic games. Static games are authored and linear in fashion. Players will all have a similar experience that has been carefully crafted by the designer. Importantly, they are meant to be finished to be consumed. Dynamic games, by contrast, are unpredictable, rules-driven and challenging. They are meant to be replayed, to be mastered. This distinction is an interesting one. While there is of course a great area between these two poles, dynamic games with static elements and vice versa, for tabletop designers, this distinction has a particular relevance. Nearly all tabletop games fall into the dynamic category. They are individual experiences with transparent rule systems that are meant to be reset and repeated ad infinitum. By contrast, many modern video games are very much static experiences. There is a storyline that players interact with. Many video games are completable experiences, meant to be played then put aside. They are finite authored experiences. But this does not have to be the case. Some video game developers have taken dynamic elements to create fantastically popular games. From the Civilization series to the modern explosion of Battle Royale style games, video gamers just cannot get enough of dynamic elements in their games. The question then is, can tabletop game designers go in the other direction? Can a tabletop game designer take some of the lessons learned from static game design and implement them into a board game? Well, an answer to this question was given when Rob Davio delivered his 2011 classic Risk Legacy, the very first Legacy game. So what is a Legacy game? Legacy as a mechanic is actually fairly simple to define. Legacy games are those which have permanent changes players can make to their games, which will influence the nature of future games. This could be through the addition of stickers, writing on components, or even destroying them entirely. This permanence means that legacy games often have a linear narrative running through them and a clear ending. Although, as we will see, neither of these are necessarily requirements. The history of legacy games starts in the first decade of the millennium with designer Rob Davio. He was working as a game developer for the giant Hasbro at the time and had several experiences which would ultimately lead to his creation of this entirely new mechanism. He was a designer on the Lord of the Rings Trivial Pursuit DVD game too and this made him start to consider games with a limited lifespan. A game of chess or go can be played and replayed endlessly but at some point, all the questions in a game of Trivial Pursuit will have been seen. So the game itself would be done. He was also inspired by a joke he told in a meeting. When discussing the classic clue, he quipped, I don't get why they keep inviting these guys for dinner. They always end up murdering someone. This got him thinking about whether there could be a game of Clue where the murder of the first game exists and affects the following one. Could Colonel Mustard finally get his comeuppance? These musings eventually led to the creation of Risk Legacy, a game where players could open boxes, destroy cards, and where each game of world domination made fundamental and permanent changes to the game world itself. Borders would change, cities would fall, and Risk Legacy uniquely allowed these persistent alterations to be decided upon by the players themselves. After creating Risk Legacy, he would famously team up with Matt Leacock to create the legacy version of Leacock's legendary Pandemic. And the rest, as they say, is history. Since Pandemic Legacy, we have seen an onslaught of games using and adapting this mechanic, often 
often to great success. The current number one game on Board Game Geek is the epic Gloomhaven, and the first Pandemic Legacy is sitting at number two in the rankings. We have seen Euro-style legacy games like Charterstone and those with negotiation at their core, like the epic King's Dilemma. At the time of writing, there are 85 items on the Board Game Geek website claiming the mechanism, and nearly half have been released since January 2021. It seems there are many more iterations of this mechanic to come. Legacy games have many excellent aspects to them, which have bred this popularity. Firstly, the permanence that defines the legacy game genre gives a real sense of excitement to games. Actions you make having permanent consequences can be a great tool to make those decisions feel much more impactful and meaningful. Davio and Leacock discuss this in a 2017 talk and point out that the component destruction gives a skin in the game feeling to gameplay. To give a movie analogy, when Bill Connors in Groundhog Day made decisions, he knew that the world would reset the following day, and so none of these decisions would ever follow him. He could do anything from robbing an armoured car to saving a child, and the end result would always be the same. Legacy games allow us to break out from this interminable tabletop temporal loop. Say that four times faster. <laughs> Another advantage lies in how legacy games reveal new material. Many legacy games have envelopes and boxes that can be opened to reveal new mechanics, rules and components. Jamie Stegmaier discussed this aspect during the launch of his Euro legacy game, Charterstone. He points out that one of the best aspects of getting a board game is the first time you open the box and reveal the game. Legacy games allow this feeling to be repeated many times, with new changes and components continually being revealed throughout their campaigns. Legacy games also have a great advantage in the tricky element of learning how to play. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is a great example of this. The first few games slowly introduced the mechanics of the full game to players, avoiding the overwhelming sensation of having these front-loaded at the start of a game. Each game gradually releases more of the full experience so players can play as they learn. There are, however, some downsides to this mechanism, which designers need to be aware of. The first is to be careful with how many new mechanisms are introduced into any game. Not all gaming groups have regular meeting times and sometimes months can pass between games. If the rules in a legacy game shift constantly and dramatically from game to game, then it is easy to lose track of where players are. Learning a new game is not everybody's favourite aspect of playing tabletop games, and sometimes legacy games can feel like every game is a learning game. One solution to this issue is to build the changes into mechanics that already exist. This will give players the fun new experience and continues the narrative but adds no additional learning cost. For our latest game, Solar 175, we are attempting to do exactly this. For example, in the game, you can buy a spacecraft from the White Star Shipyard. Over the course of the campaign, new ships with added abilities will arrive for sale and this therefore provides new gameplay and fresh material for gamers, but the fundamental mechanic of purchasing a ship from a shop remains the same, so no new mechanics and rules are needed. Another issue these games have is how difficult they are to create. Jamie Stegmaier has said publicly that after Charterstone, he did not think he would ever create another legacy game, and this feeling is very understandable. Creating a regular board game is difficult enough, playtesting and balancing each aspect until they are absolutely perfect. However, the amount of variety within a legacy game, stretching over multiple sessions, makes balancing and testing a very, very daunting task. Perhaps the greatest problem with legacy games is their consumable nature. When a game of Pandemic Legacy is completed, it has nothing further to offer players. The endlessly repeatable nature of most ball games has led many gamers to come to expect this, and many are put off by the knowledge that the game will ultimately be over. 
Rob Davio has responded to this complaint, pointing out that he set out not to create a game you would only play 20 times, but to create a game you would actually want to play 20 times. Others have pointed out that the 20 plus hours of social entertainment these games provide is excellent value for time, especially when compared to the cost of other consumable experiences, such as concert tickets or a trip to the cinema. These are both excellent points, but I think they miss the fundamental issue at hand here. Board games are tactile things. They are ownable and collectible. Players want to gain something permanent when they purchase a game, and ironically, the permanence in the gameplay of legacy games can make the games themselves feel disposable. I feel there is actually a better solution to this issue, and for our legacy game, Solar 175, we have taken a different approach. Instead of focusing on the power of destroying components, we want to build a game where we focus on improving them over time instead. Solar 175 does have a campaign, but the game does not end with the campaign, nor do the legacy elements. The world of Solar 175 will continue to expand and evolve practically endlessly, and so the best game will always be the last one you played. Many legacy games allow you to play a game repeatedly, after the campaign is over, and this is great, and we are taking this idea to the next step. In conclusion, legacy games have a huge amount to offer, and we have only scratched the surface of innovation in this field so far, but they also have their own unique pitfalls to be aware of. They are notoriously difficult to create, and can put players off with their disposable nature and endless rule changes, but if they are approached carefully, these issues can be mitigated or even removed entirely, and the new permanence this mechanic provides can lead to some truly exceptional tabletop experiences. I, for one, hope to see many more legacy games published in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to show your support. And as always, thank you so, so much to our loyal patrons who support our channel and allow us to bring regular videos on game design to you. Don't forget, Solar 175 will be launching at the start of 2022, so if you want to be notified and be one of our first backers, please make sure to click that link down in the description. Bye! Allow us to break out from this interminable tabletop temporal loop. Now, break out from this interminable tabletop tem... Lol. Legacy games allow us to break out. Allow us to break out from this interminable tabletop temporal loop. No, it's temporal.